Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Bear Evans with Lil Mike Fight Night, and today we are going to recap the whole UFC 299 main event. Um, what an absolute banger card last night, starting with Peter Yang versus Song Yadong. Oh my gosh, dude. Song, you know, I think he's 26 years old. Um, he's been in the top 10 for a long time in the bantamweight. And he absolutely was crushing it the first round, really frustrating Yan quite a bit. And then finally, uh, Yan picked up in the second and third round and really showed that championship mentality. Secondly, we have Burns versus um, Jack Della Modinella. Now, with that one right there, great fight, guys. And I'm pulling up this video right now. Great fight. The only thing was is I think that was one of the worst stoppages of all time. I think it was worse than the Jalen Turner versus Bobby Green stoppage. What do y'all think right here? I mean, he, he's... He's not actively defending. He's not anything. It looked like the ref wanted to jump in at one point, and he just let Jack go off on Gilbert. Yes, is Gilbert a tough guy? Absolutely. Did the ref maybe have confidence he could recover and finish the round because he's like a three-time jiu-jitsu world champion? Maybe. But, you know, when it comes to being a referee, your number one job is to protect fighters' brain health. And to me, when they're on the ground and they're not – you know, actively defending and are shelling up. It's time to call off the fight. It wasn't a championship fight. It wasn't a number one contender series fight. It was on a huge card, quite possibly the largest card of my lifetime, besides the uh, um, besides some Conor McGregor cards. But when it comes to how deep the card is, definitely the deepest card I personally have ever seen. The next one, we have Kevin Holland versus MVP. MVP coming over from Bellator to see if he can keep that record at only two losses in what's now known as one of the best fight promotions in the game, which is the UFC. It's known as the Big Boys League. And MVP, I was very surprised about how much he was frustrating Kevin Holland. I mean, he was back about, you know... 2x with the traditional kickboxer stances really you know kind of karate technique going in and out but his distance was so far away and he would just do this crazy blitz in there hit you with the right hand and then he would almost like like freak out to get out of there watch him throw a punch when you'd go in and you hit Kevin Holland and when you'd get out of there it's almost like he would trip over backwards or fall out of there or whatever but you know what he got the job done Kevin Holland couldn't figure out his timing, he couldn't get momentum, and he just ultimately couldn't find or materialize that success he was looking for. Next, Poirier versus Benoit Saint-Denis. Oh my gosh, guys. Benoit is no freaking joke. Um, Dustin Poirier is one of my absolutely, and my wife's favorite fighters. Um, I absolutely love the guy. Uh, Low-key cried when he lost to Oliveira and just got elbowed in the face for like one full round uh, straight up. But anyways, in this fight, um, he definitely was getting the shit beat out of him. Benoit St. Denis is absolutely a savage. And then finally, Justin, I think he hit him with the left hand, knocked him, his equilibrium off. And then uh, Justin once again jumped guillotine on him, probably like the sixth attempt before he finally let go. And then I think what end ultimately ended up uh, knocking out Benoit was a right hand. And I have that video right here. Check this out. Right there. That's that right hook that literally had teeth flying out of his mouth if you watch the slow motion. Absolute great stoppage by the ref. Um, I am just so proud that Dustin Poirier won that fight. I mean, that guy, what is he? He's ranked number 12 in the division, has finished everyone, I mean, in spectacular fashion. Dustin Poirier can call his fights. He can fight whoever he wants to. He has that much star power, and he took on that risk. Absolutely admirable. Absolutely. The next one, it's going to be Sean O'Malley versus Cheeto Vera. Now, I kind of want to go over everyone's opinions on this. Um, what I really thought was cool about Sean O'Malley is I think that he's looked the same for probably the last three or four fights in a row with a tweaked game plan. Um, one thing I did notice, though, like in the third or fourth round, he was eye fainting, which is, you know, we're standing still. He's not using any of his body or his kicks or his arms. He's just looking at you like this, and he looks down at your feet. So it's an eye faint. I'm not really big into training MMA or I've never been in an MMA fight or fight camp or anything like that. But in boxing, 
and eye faint is a big deal, even though it seems really simple and easy, it's a very hard to accomplish thing. Like when you're in the ring, just like with some, you know, 12 or 16 ounce boxing gloves, and you're like, let me look at your feet or not your feet, but your stomach, you know, you're dropping down low. It's kind of a big deal and it's hard to pull off. So I thought that was really cool that Sean not only was using the eye faints, but as well as his signature, you know, look back faint that he does with his head that most people be like, hey, that is way too dangerous. Don't do that. But Sean O'Malley's timing, speed, accuracy, and overall skill allows him to be able to afford to do something like that without getting injured. Now, um, it seems that Daniel Cormier uh, made a comment like, hey, Sean O'Malley got so much better from this fight versus like the Al Jermaine Sterling fight. The only thing you have to realize is he didn't get better. He had a different game plan. Al Jermaine Sterling was, you know, considered one of the best bantamweights at all time, you know, beating TJ Gillensaw, Peter Yan, Henry Cejudo, and he's a heavy, heavy, heavy grappler. We all know that. He's the human backpack. He's going to get that body triangle on you. Sean O'Malley's game plan was not to piece him up. It was to make sure that he couldn't take him down until he got frustrated enough to shoot where he could put his head to the right where, you know, Aldra always shoots like that, you know, after a punch will shoot. And what did Sean O'Malley do? He got Al Jermaine frustrated, and then he, once Aljo shot, he did a beautiful counter off that hand that Aljo always throws before he shoots. With Cheeto, Cheeto is not some, like, he's an amazing, like, finisher. Don't get me wrong, great record, but Cheeto is not known as, like, this grappling god, right? So Sean O'Malley was fighting it as, hey, skill for skill, stand up, I'm better, I'm skill for skill. Um, ground game, I'm better at him. Now, one difference though with Cheeto Vera is this guy is durable. He's never been knocked down. He's never been knocked out. He's never been finished in the UFC. With that being said, Sean O'Malley did hit him once where he dropped a knee. Maybe we can consider that a knockdown. Maybe not, but I don't believe that Sean O'Malley got better um, in the words of Daniel Cormier from the Aljo to um, the Cheeto fight. I just believe that his game plan was different. And he doesn't get a lot of the credit he deserves. I know that um, also Al Jermaine Sterling was saying, hey, fight someone who actually, you know, Sean never like comes into the fire, right? He's always in the back countering on the outside. Watch the Yon fight. Watch like his last three fights. I mean, he gets in the pocket all the time. One thing I will say that was very different from the Sean O'Malley that uh, we normally see is that he knew uh, Vera was very, very durable. So what he did instead was is he was investing with that right to the body. I have never seen Sean O'Malley throw so many right hands to the body. A lot of times it was, you know, his little flicker jab and then to the body. Feign a jab to the body. And he doesn't really do a one-two where the two goes to the body, right? It's always, you know, one-two to the head step back, fake, you know, jab, and then follow up, you know, with the right hand or a hook. Now, when he gets in the pocket and he starts teeing off on people, he absolutely throws body shots all the freaking time. But Sean O'Malley was just throwing that right hand to the body and left hand to the body all day long. It was money. Two other things I want to go and talk about before I end this video um, and, and a recap to this amazing card. Cheeto Vera hit him in the body on the left side. So on your left side right here, not their left side. So when you're looking at your opponent and uh, you go and you hit with your left hand um, on the left side when they're facing you, that's where their liver is, right? And so when you get shot in the liver, everything shuts down, especially when you get punched like someone by Cheeto Vera. It's a big deal. And literally like two seconds before the fight ended, Cheeto got Sean and nasty in the liver. And uh, so a lot of people are saying Sean got saved by the bell um, because he was sitting after the fight. But what I saw is, you know, 25 minutes moving around that much. It's a lot of lactic acid. If you've ever sparred or ever fought, I have never done an MMA, but I do it in boxing. You know, I spar quite a bit. And I'm telling you, I can barely fucking stand after a couple of rounds of hard sparring because your legs are literally given out. You give everything. This is on the absolute highest level MMA. I mean, he's using his feet. He's using his elbows. He's using everything, jumping around. I'm sure his, lactic, his body is just done through lactic acid. Secondly, that body shot probably fucking hurt him and he wants to sit down. He can because he just beat the shit out of him for 25 minutes. If I won the fight... I'm not going to play tough guy and pretend like that body shot didn't get me, right? Now, the last thing I want to talk about before we go here is going to be the Sean O'Malley knee. I got this amazing video of uh, Sean O'Malley kneeing Cheeto Vera in the face. 
Absolutely beautiful shot here. Just give me one moment to pull it up here. You hear that crack? It's just uh, absolutely insane. It is insane. And uh, Cheeto Vera not only got need like that not once, but he got need twice with the follow-up. That's that same knee that dropped Peter Yawn, but it did not drop Cheeto. I mean, it sounded like, I thought like my baby upstairs dropped something on the hardwood floors or something, but no, it was just Sean O'Malley's knee to Cheeto's face. But with that knee, Cheeto got hit doing this with his head down and he got kneed. So when your head is down, all your neck muscles are engaged. I mean, even like a little bit of your, everything is engaged here from like your traps, your rear delts, you're, you're really engaged and you're tight. So when you get hit in the knee here, um, you have a lot more stabilizing muscles to support that impact rather than if your neck was just kind of down loose and you weren't tucked in, your chin wasn't tucked down, you get hit in the head. That might give you whiplash and knock you the fuck out. Anyways, guys, what are your thoughts? I think that was the most deep, stacked main event ever. I think Sean O'Malley is finally proving to all the haters how good he really is. He really is a lot of fun to watch, whether he's the most durable quote-unquote guy or not whether he's got the pink hair or smokes the weed he is absolutely phenomenal to watch with all that being said let me know on your thoughts down below was it the earliest stoppage ever uh can michael venom page beat someone like in the top five like who has really good ground game i would love to see that um did uh did Dustin Poirier, do you think he deserves that title shot? I know Islam said he's down, and so did his manager. And then uh, fourthly, what do you think about Sean O'Malley? Do you think he lives up to the hype? Do you think Marab's going to sleep him? But I see this guy consistently going up against world-class people and knocking him out. With all that being said, I'm out. Peace.